Imagine the following. You're standing in front of your entire team, facing 60 highly qualified employees who know their job in and out. You're actually standing slightly elevated on a quite narrow one by one square meter podium so that everybody can see you. It may seem scary. Telling them, I am your leader, you have to work like I say, is a no go. They've had other bosses before you, some they liked and accepted. Others not. They've got rid of bosses many times. They're brutal sometimes. Just one wrong movement, one wrong word, and you've lost their respect and trust forever. They usually make up their minds about you within 30 seconds of meeting you. Your customers are there too, right behind you. They are hyped up, waiting for your company's presentation of the new product in huge anticipation. You greet them, but you quickly turn your back and face your team again. Together, you will deliver a one and a half hour long presentation and whatever happens, there will be no opportunity to correct or repeat. It's a one-go show. Your number one job is to provide security and project confidence to the team. You know you've done a good job preparing the team and can rely on them to the extent that maybe they don't even need you there. Now it's all about delivering the presentation. You're passionate about it in your own way and you share this passion with your team. Your team answers your call and does their utmost, enjoying the moment in a unique spirit of togetherness, relishing the many features, the brilliant design that your product presents. It's a proud moment for the whole company. The presentation ends. People in the audience are excited. They stand up and a big applause follows. We love it. That's the moment you've all worked hard for. You thank your whole team and especially those that outperformed themselves, giving them special credit so that the audience knows who these employees are. You bow and thank the public. Without them, there would be no product, no presentation, no job. Your job is, however, not done. In two or three days, perhaps even the next day, you will stand in front of your team again and do another presentation. It might, however, be in another country or even with another team. That's your life. Does this story sound familiar? Can you relate it to your own experience? Well, this is an average day in the life of a music conductor. Let's find out how it actually works. I am Bibi Pelich, and I'll be talking to you today about finding inspirational leadership outside your own industry. We'll explore the concept, how to orchestrate your leadership, and successfully take on the challenges we face today, navigating your way through the new normal. I'm sure many of you like to travel. I personally admit, I love to travel. But why do we travel? Why do we visit faraway countries, taste different delicious food, enjoy beautiful beaches or lovely captivating landscapes? that are so different than the ones we find in our own country? Why do we engage in learning about other cultures, learning a few foreign words to get around more easily and are often inspired to adopt the clothing style of that particular culture? We might explain all this in our own way, but one thing traveling does is that it takes us to places we've never been before, opening our minds to new ideas, new sensations, new experiences. We return richer from travel, wealthier in many aspects. Probably you've never thought of it, but aren't we travelers all adventurers in our own way? Now, why can't we do the same in our profession? Why not travel and explore the processes and practices of other industries? 
what company culture means to them, what their leaders do, how their organizations are set up, and what their behaviors and attitudes are. We might find similarities. We might find differences too. We may recognize that their organizational behaviors and style would be a good fit for our company. Perhaps not. But similar to our traveling around the world experience, traveling to other industries broadens our mindset, opens new perspectives, and gives us an idea how we can transform and grow in and around our work environment. Have you ever thought of looking to music as a professional travel destination? I won't necessarily call myself a tour operator, but I'll take you on a tour of the music world to see what leaders do there. Can they give us an idea of how to navigate the new normal? In my introduction, I gave you an overview of an average day in the world of the music conductor. A day full of anticipation, hard work, and challenges. If we think about the qualities the music conductor needs to pull off concerts on a regular basis, the new normal is an everyday occurrence. Nothing is ever the same. Constant adjusting to new orchestras, new team members, new behaviors is normal. Not to mention the customer base, the audience, that always expects the best performance from you and will not be at all forgiving if for one moment you lose focus, concentration, or your passion. It is well documented from the past that bad opera performances were awarded with rotten tomatoes. To my knowledge, rotten tomatoes are not thrown at unfortunate performers anymore. But the award can nevertheless be harsh. Audiences buy that expensive concert ticket to feel exhilarated, excited, empowered, and happy. They want to go home with a wow. I'm sure we all feel similar sensations and want to feel special when we buy something we're passionate about. A car, a phone, a camera. And that's a lot of pressure. How does the music conductor orchestrate his or her leadership? What qualities drive the conductor to meet the new normal on a daily basis? In business, we talk about leaders of the last hundred years. Henry Ford, J.P. Morgan, Jack Welch, Sam Walton, Steve Jobs. But only in the last 20 to 30 years has there been an emphasis worldwide on the importance and responsibility of corporate leadership. Now think of this. The music conductor has been around for approximately 400 years. That's four centuries. Amazing, isn't it? Think of all that has happened in the world during that period. Empires emerged and vanished. Societies transformed, technology developed with unbelievable speed. The music conductor not only survived, but became the key person in music performance. With the first conductor initially just there to help everybody start and finish together by slamming a stick into the floor, the conductor gradually developed into this powerful figure before who Everybody sometimes even trembled. Careers were made and lost. Nowadays, of course, it is different. Music conductors are carriers of a great heritage and torchbearers of accumulated knowledge, wisdom, and experience. What they have mostly learned from this heritage is that change is constant. What was yesterday might not necessarily be today. We have all been affected by COVID-19. Some of us needed more time to adjust, some less. We had to move outside our comfort zone, question the way we did things, and quickly embrace a new mindset. A mindset perhaps resembling that of an adventurer or maverick. As a musician myself, 
I have learned that constant change is the normal. I must have an open mind to whatever happens. The only thing I can expect is the unexpected. There is a problem with the conservator. We'll handle it. The marketing department did a bad job and not enough tickets were sold. Let's do something about it. There is no heating in the concert hall. Never mind, we'll figure it out. We'll play in coats. Accepting the normality of constant change is our new normal. And nobody perhaps knows it better than the music conductor. Being a conductor is kind of a hybrid profession because most fundamentally, it is being someone who is a coach, a trainer, an editor, a director. These words by music conductor Michael Tilson Thomas are quite a handful, aren't they? Is the secret to navigating the stormy seas of the new normal a leadership that we may describe as hybrid? A leadership where knowledge and experiences flow, processes blend, and there is a strong connection between past, present, and future. Let's explore this leadership now through the example of a music conductor who inspired not just generations of conductors to come, but the whole music world. Herbert von Karajan was not only one of the greatest conductors of all time, but also a great businessman, visionary, and maverick. Conducting the Berlin Philharmonic towards the end of World War II, with bombs falling over Berlin, Karajan did not cancel concerts, but just rescheduled them. Later in the 1950s, he asked a key question, 200 people come and listen to a performance. Why can't 200,000 listen to the same concert? While for others this was unimaginable at the time, Karana figured it out. Let's do TV broadcasts so that audiences from far away, Japan, Australia and the US, can tune in live and watch too. Here we can see how Karayan's strong vision connected the past and future through the present. A vision is a driving force of leadership with hybrid qualities, but to understand its implementation, we will now go deeper into the conductor's mindset and find blended processes where knowledge and experience flow. When you look at Karayan conducting, what is the first thing you see? His eyes are closed in total focus and concentration because two significant blended processes are happening. The first is learning, practice, feedback, performance happen at the same time. There is no time to separate them. For example, if an orchestra member makes a mistake during a performance, the conductor subtly gives a sign, gesture. That's okay, this happened. It won't the next time we move forward. Now you know, don't let it happen next time. Learning and feedback is immediate. The second process is perhaps even more demanding. Imagine that you have to tell your team, we're doing this now, you also need to know what's coming up next and you need to reflect on what happened a second ago so that you can adjust the now and the next. That's quite challenging. That means your mindset needs to be in the past, present and future at the same time. This is a critical process that many conductors have told me is key to the success of a performance. These three time points are a remarkable feat. Would you agree? A leadership that is able to manage these processes and is resilient enough to counter challenges needs discipline. I spoke about the power of Karayan's vision earlier. What about his discipline? He demanded absolute discipline from the orchestra, but was himself the most disciplined of all. Karayan knew that success 
is a result of strong commitment and discipline, often a lifetime spent in training and learning. Other fields of human endeavor, like sport, give us also a great example of the importance of discipline. We come now to the key point of orchestrating your leadership, style. Which leadership style is best? Which is worse? We can discuss this at length, find arguments for this or that leadership style, but one noticeable thing when analyzing a wide spectrum of conductors is that they don't have a single style. If we now go back to Karayan, who was thought of as an autocratic leader, we also recognize his leadership flexibility, moving through different styles depending on the situation. I've spoken to many business leaders about this too. They share this opinion using quite a colorful way of expressing this. They use the expression of a toolbox. I take one style from my toolbox that I need at the moment. You know, one of my business clients had serious problems with his team. There was constant misunderstanding going on between the management and staff. After the first consulting session with the management, I showed them two images and said, look, this is you, but your team needs you to be like this. They looked at me, oh wow, eyes opened, jaws opening, Bibi, we never thought of that. We were always wondering why. Yes, because you're jazz players, great jazz players. You take ideas from each other, build on them and perform like wizards. You work on improvisation, so there was no need to write things down. Your team is, however, a different story. They are a classical orchestra. They need structure, everything written down, and clear directions on how to work. They are not able to understand your jazzy style. You will need to adapt your jazzy style to a more classical one. So, let's take our toolbox and find the classical style. When you're together, then we put back the classical style and take the jazzy one. This client was a great example of how to orchestrate your leadership. As a startup, they needed a jazzy spirit to move their company forward. They needed to adjust, adapt on a continuous basis within the organization and also towards clients. The jazzy style enabled this to happen. Let's not forget one important thing. How does your team see you, the leader? Take a minute and think. A great description of Karayan was given by one of the orchestra members who remarked that when Karayan walked towards the orchestra, they felt he was one of us. And this reminds me of a recent talk I had with a conductor. When I asked him about his leadership conducting style, he answered, Bibi, it's not really for me to say, it's for the orchestra to say. This is real humbleness, I told myself. Actually, quite characteristic for a music leader. Have you heard a CEO of a business corporation say the same? So, reflect on your image. Who are you and what do you stand for? Do you feel you are a leader and, at the same time, one of the team? There are, of course, many other qualities we could discuss. But for today, I'll mention one more and, I think, key for us to help us navigate the new normal. Courage. Great leadership needs courage. Karayan is a maverick, an adventurer, a rule-bending rebel. Remember, I told you that not even bombs falling on the city deterred him from cancelling his schedule. He was the first to include women in the Berlin Philharmonic. This bold move was also the end of his relationship 
with the orchestra. It was a gamble. Karaya knew it, but persisted in his decision. This took courage. This courage opened doors for other old European traditional orchestras, like the Czech Philharmonic, to include women in the orchestra. Courage needs strong beliefs. Having the courage is also to take things on even if you don't know much about them or you think you're not ready for them. If we go back to the beginning of 2020, what did you think about home office? Did you think the same as today? Well, probably not. The understanding of time is key. Here I'd like to mention another great conductor, the very famous and charismatic Leopold Stokowski, always recognizable with his crazy hair. He took on his first conducting job, not really knowing what he was in for. He learned it along the way. Later in his career, he called Walt Disney and told him, I understand you are doing The Sorcerer's Apprentice. I would love to do that for you. I will do it for nothing. Stokowski worked together with Walt Disney to create Fantasia, still regarded as one of the best animated films ever made. The courage to tackle something we've never done before is in a musician's mindset and should be in all of ours. Come to think of it, I was once asked at a concert I was performing to talk about the music I'd be playing. I had never spoken in front of an audience, but I said I'd try. It went rather well and I started my music appreciation classes. A few years later, I was asked to write an online course. Till then, I had never written anything substantial apart from the standard emails, but I gave it a shot. As a result, I was asked to run the customer service department for an e-learning global organization. I had never worked in an office, had no idea at the time what working in a corporate environment meant. But I said, I'll do it. If I had not given those tries, said yes, endure a lot of great and challenging moments, I wouldn't have my own business today and I wouldn't be here with you. COVID-19 forced us to move outside our comfort zone. It taught us to move outside our house. In this case, actually inside our house. So we can continue growing. Crisis, challenges in general, bring us a gift if we can recognize it. They give us the opportunity to constantly grow, to embrace the mindset of constant change. What music conductors teach is that constant change is good. If there were no changes, we'd still be seeing a person slamming the stick beside the orchestra. That would be disappointing, wouldn't it? Now, let's come to the solution for the new normal based on what you heard today. Five key points to keep track of. Vision, discipline, focus, flexible style, courage. Think about the average day of a music conductor I spoke about at the beginning. The challenge, anticipation, trust, excitement. As you may have concluded, music and business talk about the same things, but use different terms and ways of expressing and explaining. Let's get outside our comfort zone, explore the world beyond our office walls. Take a look outside, start our exploration of the world's best leadership minds in a fantastic journey. Find out what doesn't work. Learn to orchestrate your leadership. Thanks for your attention. Stay well and wish you success. Be courageous.